Good morning. <laughs> Chi Chi and I are here with you this morning. She uh, wanted something else to eat. Here comes Peanut. Peanut you, you will probably never see on camera. She is a big scaredy cat. She's afraid of everything. But uh, anyhow, not so with Kiwi. Uh, Kiwi's the king of the house. She, she rules the other cats. But anyway, um, I was reading a story about something that happened in Italy and and after getting the opportunity to go to Rome a couple of years ago I kinda take interest of things that that happened there and um, it was a story about the town that um, where the Stradivarius violins were built if you know anything at all about Stradivarius violins you know that they are absolutely the most uh, amazing, most perfect violins and cellos that were ever made. But on this particular day, uh, there was a there was a lady working in a restaurant, and she drops a glass and she breaks it. Normally, that wouldn't be any big deal, but she's she's mortified. And actually, a police officer walks in the door and tells her, "Keep it down. Be quiet." Um, what was going on is the city had asked everybody at this particular hour during this particular time to be particularly quiet because they were recording the sounds of the Stradivarius to be saved for, for posterity. Apparently, I'm, I'm no expert on, on uh, violins and cellos, but apparently uh, the Stradivarius is... For whatever reason, the master, uh, the master maker, I, th I think his name was Antonio Stradivarius, or Stradivari, something like that. Antonio Stradivari. Um, apparently, the the cellos and the violins that he produced had such a pure, clean, clear, crisp sound that these violin these these violin violins have become almost priceless and of course he's dead and gone now and there's nobody producing these anymore and so each one was was handmade meticulously and uh, so they were going to record these sounds so that they could be saved for future generations in case anything happened to the violins because eventually you know, no matter how good a care is taken of them, these violins are going to age and, and the age is going to have an, an effect on them. And so, um, on this particular day, the mayor's ordered everybody to be quiet, no cars in the streets, um, no women walking down the street in high heels, and here this lady drops a glass. And you think, no big deal. I mean, she's not even in the same building. But apparently the recording equipment that they were using was incredibly, incredibly sophisticated and incredibly delicate. And so they're recording this, this um, musician who is going through, I believe it was the C scale, the C major scale, as the recording team is watching what's going on. They're watching all the, me all the meters and everything. And all of a sudden the engineer says, stop, stop, stop. And he's looking and listening and he's listening very closely he's play, playing it back and listening and he stops and he says okay who dropped the glass <laughs> the recording equipment had picked up this glass dropping um, from that far away uh, certain sounds certain vibrations could travel through the ground and and were picked up by this equipment well you say what's that got to do with anything well, here's what it made me think about. It made me think about the fact that nothing can interfere with God's ability to hear our prayers. Nothing can stop <laughs> nothing can stop what what um, how do I want to say it? God hears everything. He sees everything. He knows everything. He hears our prayers. He's not distracted. He's not taken away. I have a terrible problem with distraction. Kiwi just jumped down and ran past, and I, I easily am distracted. Um, but it never happens that way with God. God hears every little thing. He sees every little thing. He knows every little thing. That is Peanut. Peanut's getting her share. 
So you've never met Peanut before. Um, anyway, I'm sorry for the distraction. I'm sorry for not staying focused. Here's the point I'm trying to make. While we oftentimes, while God oftentimes is, while God is never distracted, we oftentimes are distracted from hearing the voice of God. We're oftentimes, and I don't mean a literal voice, but we're oftentimes distracted from what God is trying to tell us, what God is trying to say to us, and what we need to hear from Him. And we need to make sure that there's times in our life that we're just going to be quiet before God so that we can hear through His Word or so that we can hear through uh, the voice of, of, of a preacher or through the voice of, of a song or through something so we can hear what God is trying to teach us, what God is trying to show us. The Bible says in Job chapter 6, verse 24, Teach me and I will be silent. Make me understand how I have gone astray. Job says, I want to listen to you, God. You teach me and I'll be quiet. I'll listen. We need to covenant today to say, God, I'm going to take this much time just to set aside, just, I'm going to set this time aside just to listen to your word, just to listen to what you have to say to me. Get your Bible out and in, in a time of quiet silence, just take some time to spend time reading his word. Put on some good, uh, some good Christian music and listen to what inspired that song leader that songwriter meditate on how God speaks to you through that song but listen be quiet from all the distraction from all the bustle that's around be quiet and listen so that God can speak well I'm sorry that was sort of a disjointed uh, devotional and sort of distracted but I hope it's helpful to you hope you have a great day today uh, and I hope that your day is just filled with all kinds of blessings. I will, Lord willing, see you tomorrow, and we'll go from there. For some reason, my phone keeps dropping the camera, so I have to reach up and turn it off. I will talk to you later. God bless.